computer. All right, you loveliest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week five of the artist way. So it looks like it's just me and Nancy. If somebody else will join in, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll just have fun and, and do what we're gonna do. So I actually wanted to run our call slightly different today because I wanted to talk about week five. And those of you who are behind and don't got a chance to read it yet and do the exercises, will get a bit of a preview and also like a crash course on this particular week because it's such a beautiful week and it's the one that uh, precedes the one of recovering sense of abundance, which is week six, one of my most favorite one in the course. So um, I'm very excited for you guys to ease you into this. So let's get started. So first thing first, let's talk about the limits and how we are limiting ourselves in what's possible and what's not possible. So Julia Cameron said it best, said, God has lots of money. God has lots of movie ideas, novel ideas, poems, songs, paintings, acting jobs. God has a supply of lovers, friends, houses. <laughs> By listening to the creator within, we are led to our right path. On that path, we find friends, lovers, money, and meaningful work. Now, she also talks about this sense, and I think that's, that's, there's a lot of misunderstanding in spiritual community of people who are doing a lot of self-growth and affirmations and tapping and all that good stuff. And there's a lot of things that are not happening. Well, because along with that, you need to do what's called inspired actions. Okay, and I think this is something that's missing a little bit in Fast GFT community as well, because a lot of memory changing, a lot of journal, uh, happy journals, all of that good stuff. But if you're not taking actual physical steps, it's really hard to manifest things that you want to manifest, right? And they're really tiny and they're really incremental, but they're very symbolic and they had to be done. They're also usually a little scary. So in a world that I work in, which is relationships, both, you know, coaching single women and both women who are in, in marriage. For single women, it will be something like open your dating profile and go date, right? That would be your inspired action. Like you, have, you do all of this thing of cleaning your past and forgiving your partners and creating a vision. But unless you get physically off the couch and start meeting people, the chances are pretty small, not impossible, but pretty small that you'll meet somebody. The reason I'm saying it's not impossible because I had a case of woman who moved into a new apartment, a neighbor knocked on the door, brought her cheese and wine as they started dating, right? So like she was literally sitting on the couch. Now this is rare, right? And the same thing with relationships. So if it's something that you're dealing with your husband, very often you need to learn how to speak your microscopic truth, right? Learn how to communicate those difficult things. They usually are quite painful. But once you are crossing that line, it's actually not so bad, right? And that's the only way to grow. You've got to learn how to speak your truth, communicate with love, peace, and inspiration for your partner to do the same, right? And so as you're easing into this chapter, she, this is what Julia Cameron said. In other words, pray to catch the bus, but run as fast as you can, right? <laughs> pray to catch the bus, but then run as fast as you can. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about finding the river, and it has to do with the dependence and independence factor, and this is something that we talked a lot about with one of my clients who was getting out of a difficult relationship, and she was having a really hard time to find this independence piece. So dependence on the creator within is really freedom from other dependencies. Paradoxically, it is also the only route to real, true intimacy with other human being. And so when you think about this concept of dependence versus independence versus codependence, I like to explain it in this way. So there's really three levels of dependency. So the first one is the one of codependence, right? When you're dependent on someone in one way or another, whether it's emotionally, financially, or in any other way, it really is not a healthy way to exist in a small one existence in survival mode, right? So that's the lowest level of dependence. So the next one is independence. That's the middle one. That's the one where also a lot of women that I work with are in and they're like, yeah, I figure out the work and I figure out the business and I figure out I have the kids already. So they almost like, yeah, I can do this whole thing. I don't even need a man, right? Which is not also necessarily the healthiest way to 
B, because then the same woman come to me in the 40s and 50s and they look back and say, all I ever wanted is to give and receive love, right? And I spent my life building the career, I spent my life building this business. And so that's the independence. But you have to go from codependence to independence. Now, the third level of that is interdependence, right? Interdependence. So interdependence is a very healthy way to create relationship. It's the one where you technically can be on your own and you can figure things out, but you are in a place where you are so happy and you're already in love with yourself, then when another person comes into your life, you are on about the same level and you can co-create beautifully. You can help each other heal, you can help each other grow. Financially, it's also easier, I think, right? When you're with a good person and with the right man and things are just taken off from there. And so she talks about this, you know, dependency part in a little bit. And idolarity is another thing that she mentioned. So she said, in short, we are learning to give up idolarity, the worship, dependency on any other person, place, or thing. Instead, we place our dependency on the source itself. The source meets our needs through people, places, and things. So essentially what idolatry means is like, and again, this is very common. We meet this guy and he's just so perfect and we put him on a pedestal and we like nearly pray to him. You know? And sometimes we even do it in relationships that are close to us, right? And it's really hard on that person to maintain that level because he or she wants to be a human too, right? Notice if you're doing something like that with your mentor. Notice if you're doing something like this with your EFT coach. It really is not healthy. Start seeing people in your life. Maybe they are leaders. Maybe they went further than you are, but more of co-creating something together versus you looking up from here down there, right? Okay. So, um, the last piece, and you know, me and Nancy talked about that a little bit, is something that has to do with virtue trap. The virtue, the virtue trap. <laughs> I don't know I said it right. But the virtue trap has to do with an artist might have downtime time, time to do nothing. And this is a hard lesson for me, and I'm still learning it. And when I'm failing at this lesson, I feel overwhelmed and I feel uh, cranky and my family is not benefiting from it because I'm not in a place of giving. And I was explaining it to the client this morning and I said, it's actually very simple. Imagine having a pot, like a pot of soup or something, right? So if your pot is empty, it's really hard to feed others, to give to others or to serve others with that soup, right? So you have to constantly refill that pot with the soup in order to be able to serve and give and be of service. And I think this is such a simple concept. I think a four-year-old can understand that. But for us women, it's something that's sometimes a bit foreign, right? We put ourselves on the back burner. We try to fit into different ways of how other people are doing it. And one of the ways that I'm trying to do it is some time I look at Ernie and Ernie is a very hardworking man and he runs his own business and he can work all day long, pretty much nonstop. And that's fine for him. He just, he's very hardworking and he's very focused, right? So he can sit down on his computer, drafting his contract, talking to the clients, yada, yada. And that's just not how I work, okay? I can sit down, I can do like maybe two hours of things, but then I need to get up and go on a bike ride, right? Then I sit down, maybe I work for two more, and I need to get up and watch a movie. <laughs> this is really how I work best. And I'm just discovering it now, because literally today, I went and saw Maleficent in the middle of the day. How awesome, hashtag being an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> and so that felt really, really right. And I think Julia Cameron, really is one of the people who helped me understand this, right? Because when I give to myself, I'm in a much better place to be a space for others, to encourage them to do the same. Now, afraid to appear selfish, we'll lose ourselves. We become self-destructive because this self-murder is something we seek passively rather than consciously act out. We often blind to its poisonous grip on us. So, can I get an amen here? <laughs> amen. I'd love to hear from Nancy in just a second on this topic. 
um, you know, if you have some insights to share or how it showed up in your life, definitely want to hear about that. So I'll just go ahead and wrap up the last two parts of this chapter. And then we'll have a quick conversation. So the virtue trapped quiz is something that I love for you to take. So start writing things down. So she'll ask you the biggest luck in my life. So I put time and money. The greatest joy in my life, facilitate healing, uh, moving or, or dancing. The largest time commitment is work, building my business. Uh, and so start writing those things down. And so what's going to start showing up is a lot of limiting beliefs. And a lot of things that we perceive as true, but they're not necessarily true. Um, a quick example of that is, remember last time we talked about reading deprivation, guys? So I haven't done reading deprivation, but I did Facebook deprivation. So for one week, I went on Facebook for seven days, and it was fantastic. It was super duper phenomenal. It was very easy to do. And it made me realize how much time I lose on Facebook. Now, most of my clients do find me from Facebook. So technically I can say I use it for work, but it was insane of how much time I actually was spending there versus the you know, return on investment. So right now I'm saying, okay, it's kind of like sugar decluttering. You know what I did sugar detox before? Like if you eliminate all the sugar from your diet and when you come back, even a little bit of sugar feels like, oh my gosh, that's a lot, right? So that's what I'm feeling right now. I'm like, yeah, 30 minutes of day of Facebook is plenty. I can do my posting. I can interact with people. I can answer questions. Whatever I need to do, I need to put 30 minutes on the clock and do this. So start noticing some of this and virtue trap quiz will definitely help you. Now, forbidden joy exercise is really great. So it talks about 10 things that you absolutely love, love doing but maybe you don't have time for it, or maybe you just never get to do it, or whatever those excuses are, so write them down. And last one, a wish list and exercise. And this is the one from um, a couple of years ago when I did it the first time. So my number one was, I wish I had a husband, and now I have a husband, right? <laughs> so it totally works. So write it down, guys, I highly recommend that. And then it says, I wish I could go travel to Europe, and I went to travel to Europe twice since I wrote this down. How awesome is that? Totally awesome. So do a visualist exercise, a really great one. And of course, from the task, just go ahead and do a couple. And, and here's the truth, guys. I'm as guilty as you are when it comes to doing exercises, and I put it off. So a quick fix to that would be just put 30 minutes on the clock and say, I'm just gonna do as much as I can do in 30 minutes. That's all right? So totally don't overthink it. Totally don't overdo it. You don't have to do all of them. Please don't do all of them. <laughs> Just pick a couple. That's more than enough. Plus, if all you do during the artist way is your morning pages and your artist day, you're already a lightning miles ahead of others, okay? All right. So let me turn the mic to um, Nancy. So what are your insights from that chapter? What kind of things came up for you that she was like, oh my gosh, yeah, this was really wow. Um, well, one of the big things that um, I've been really kind of working on in the in the background is the whole concept of deserving. And when she talked on that on page 92 about um, guilt, about having or getting too much, since everyone can draw on the universal supply, we deprive no one with our abundance. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, my mind is still, I did a bunch of writing about that. And then I, in my writing, I realized that I wrote down, am I allowed to have 100% good? And I had to tap because there's something about, I felt obligated to pay for the rest. Like I could have 80% good, but the other 20% I had to be obligated for or pay for. And I went, no, 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 that's not, that's faulty thinking. And so I was able to see that and um, tap that out. And um, I did do all the exercises in the back. I think it's interesting on page 101 where you said your biggest lack in your life was time and money. I put down, I didn't even think about time and money. I put down my biggest lack in my life is direction, you know, like focus. I'm like all over the place. So I just think it's interesting how we could just approach things. Well, and the truth is, when I was writing it, that's exactly how it felt, right? At that time, it was time and money. Actually, the direction, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an EFT practitioner. I wanted to help women find love. That was not a question. 
but yeah, we will have different labs, quote unquote, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've been thinking a lot about what you've talked before also about niche and defining a space out there for you. So I think that's why I was specifically thinking about direction and deserving. It was just kind of all flowing together. And then that whole stuff about that virtue was just, you know, that whole thing, I could kill you when you interrupt me. I mean, I have said that almost word for word to my husband, you know, stop interrupting me, you know, leave me alone. And when I read that, I went, oh, that's because I'm not taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So. Very good. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. And it's good to kind of get this reinforcement because sometimes there are things that we are thinking or words that we are kind of trying to process. We just don't have a good language to express it. And it's almost as she gives up that language. And she said, that thing that you're feeling, totally normal. And that's what it called. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Alrighty, so um, if you guys are um, feeling like it, so when you're listening to the replay, share those three things with us below. We would love to hear. Meanwhile, me and Nancy will talk about the three things that we are celebrating. Now, I would love for you guys to share one of those things, Actual Artist Day. So we're almost halfway through the course, and I really would love for you to start doing those dates a little bit more regularly, maybe not weekly, but as often as you can, even if it's bi-weekly but really do give yourself a break and really do something non-logistic, something that you normally don't do, something a little bit outside of the box or just different for yourself and notice how it fuels your life. Notice how it fuels your soul and what it does for you. And I was talking to my daughter about the artist day this Saturday and she was having a hard time to understand what is that and why mom living by himself. And I said, this is something that mama does for herself. It makes mama feels good. I mean, mama feels good. Everybody feels good. Because, you know, I take care of Ernie. I take care of you. I take care of my clients. This is my time to take care of myself. And she said, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> so even my six-year-old daughter completely understood the concept. And if she can, everybody can, right? And so my three things, so the first one was actually uh, today, I did my artist date for this week. I took myself to a movie theater and I watched Maleficent, which was totally awesome. I laughed, I cried a lot. And uh, it was just such a gorgeous movie. If you guys haven't seen Maleficent 1, watch it. And that one is already like on Netflix, so you can find it somewhere. But Maleficent 2 is in movie theaters. And I think it's a really beautiful, beautiful story. The costumes are out of this world. And um, I had myself some popcorn and I had myself some gyro, gyro, whatever that, that Greek thing is. <laughs> so I took out myself for lunch. It was really great. So the second thing that I wanted to celebrate is the seven days of Facebook. So I shared with you really briefly this thing, but it was really, really eye-opening, especially in how much time was leaking into scrolling and also energy, right? To read somebody's posts, to answer to this post, to think about this post, it takes a lot of bandwidth. So this, this part of you that can create and serve and, and, and do something wonderful in the world is busy processing those little minutiae. And so, so kind of removing that from the life and doing a bit of a electronic decluttering started to create a beautiful opening for myself. And so my third thing is actually that thing that is being birthed. And um, you guys will hear more about that, especially if you're on my email list. But what I'm considering doing is something that's called mentorship for it's for EFT and fast EFT people. It has very specific criteria on how I want to do it. And um, this is something I've been kind of thinking about and, and sort of considering doing. And now it just became very clear what it's going to look like and how I want to do this. And so if you're interested in hearing more about it, make sure to reply to my email because I sent an email to my list and I had like 30 or 40 people already replied. It's crazy. <laughs> you know? right? It's like, this is how you know that you move in the right direction, right? So this is my next thing. And I call it like a thrive in bees and love mentorship. But I might change it. It's just something that first thing that popped in my in, into my head. And, and, you know, of course, I'll share more details. And, and, and to, to, to do this with me, people will actually need to apply and have a, an interview with me because I'm looking for a specific group of people to do this for, right? It's really not for everybody. But I will interview them, and if they're a good fit, then we'll kind of move forward. So, so that, that felt really, really good. All right, so Nancy, I'm excited to hear your three things. So share, share. Okay. 
Um, yesterday, um, I had coffee with Becky Buckman here in town and we sat and talked for over two hours. I don't think I've ever had coffee with anybody that's gone that long. We had so much fun. It was just great. Um, and then, uh, I just want to say, I, I know Becky, me and Becky, we slept together. Um, we, <laughs> we actually shared a room for one of the events. Mm -hmm. And so she was just kind of joking around. This is Olga. I slept with her. So we have the <laughs> big bed. We obviously, you know, just literally slept together. But yeah, Becky is a lot of fun. I absolutely love her. She created this card that I use almost mm -hmm. on every one of my session and I love them. And I changed some things a little bit, but overall, I think she's absolutely a beautiful person and, and a great practitioner. And, and I'm glad that you guys got to get up. I, I bet you had a lot of fun. Yeah, we do. We've done it periodically. So that was neat. And then um, next week, I am going to California. I've never been to California, so I'm kind of excited. And as part of that trip, I'm going to get to see the beach there. So I've never seen the Pacific Ocean, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, and, you know, as a part of that, I'm going to Heather McKean's thing, and so I'm going to get to meet Heather. So that's kind of like a, kind of like a fangirl a little bit, you know. I mean, she's, it was her story that really kind of sealed the deal for me getting into Faster EFT. I'm like, wow, if that can help her, that can help me. So I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I met Heather. I think she's, she's absolutely amazing. And uh, you guys probably had this feeling when you come to Fast Drift event, you see all these people and they're like celebrities. So I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I saw you and I saw you <laughs> on YouTube. So yeah, totally hear you. Okay, those are my three things. Oh, fantastic. What else am I supposed to tell you? So Becky and then- so Becky California. and I'm going to California and then I'm going to meet Heather. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So got you, got you, got you. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of tapping. It might be a shorter session since it's just the two of us, but we'll go ahead and clear whatever comes up. So the sense of possibilities. So if you have anything in that area, we can tap on that. Or if you had something else that kind of popped up, I was like, oh yeah, that would be a good one to clear. Or that one would be a good one to get clarity on. Or that one would be too good just to kind of talk out loud and see what's there because I want to get an insight and kind of have an understanding, right? So any of those things totally open for, um, you know, tapping slash brainstorming. So let me know what would you like to work on? Well, I think that concept of um, guilt about having or getting too much. Mm -hmm. um, and also it says, you know, if we learn to think of receiving God's good as being an act of worship to cooperate with him, mm -hmm. I just think so long, so often I'm just like, no, that's okay. I'm okay. I've got it. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I just shrink. So I guess that kind of rolls into what we're going to be talking about next week, but you know, receiving. Right. And that makes sense. So tell me a little bit more about how does this guilt show up? And what is that you are okay to have and not okay to have just in that limiting perspective? Oh, I feel the nerves in my stomach. Um, I don't know. I'm just starting to flesh this out. So, um, I guess there's been a long standing thought that, you know, I, you know, my husband has been, my second husband has been a really good provider. My first husband was also, but my second husband was a really good provider. So much so that there's this guilt that I have things that other people don't. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I can't fix the whole world though. And um, so just tr sitting in that tension, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, we donate and we do things mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, but that doesn't, yeah, there's there's still some kind of guilt thing there and I don't really know what that's about. Oh no no that makes a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, I remember being married to somebody who wasn't a good provider. And I was looking at all this women who are married to a good guy, who make good money. It's like, how come they have any problem at all? I mean like their whole world is you know like they already have everything you can possibly you know want. But of course, it's not true, right? We all have problems and it's, it's mm -hmm. totally, totally normal. And it's not until I started tapping on this thing, right? Which was jealousy mixed up with I cannot have it and lucky bitches or whatever, right? 
that I actually allowed myself to attract a good man in my life, who is a good provider, and it's totally fine, right? And so I think this is a good one to clear because you're starting to bump up against something that's called an upper limit, right? Like, okay, I can have a husband who makes a lot of money, but I cannot have a business that thrives, right? That's it. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that, that's what I was kind of curious about. How do you do this in your mind? What, are, what is the conversation? What is it that you're saying to yourself? And maybe it's, if it's just that, let's stop on that, right? Well, the words that have come in my head that I've started to hear are, you don't deserve. Mm -hmm. specifically you know I'll think of something and it's like well you don't really deserve that and I'm like wait a minute that's a tape from somewhere All right so tell me because I'm, I'm really curious about this what is it that you're not deserving I don't uh, you know I, I can't remember what it was specifically that came up recently um, it was an opportunity to do something um, and it was kind of a well, you don't deserve that or and that's that's when I just was like, oh, I'm aware of that now. That was all I know. Mm -hmm. But I had never heard. I guess what it was, part of it was I was listening to a tape and the guy was talking about the two biggest, most people will fall into, most people that you're helping will fall into one of two camps, the I'm, I'm not good enough belief or the I don't deserve it belief. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I've done 20 years of work on the I'm not good enough belief. But I've never heard the I don't deserve it belief. And when he said that, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I have that. And then I started hearing it over and over and over. So, so do you want to have a business? Do you want help people with tapping? What is that that you want? And yeah, see, I, I want to have that business. But there's even part of me that's going, but I don't need to start it until my husband's he's got a certain amount of severance. I don't want to start it until his severance runs out because then we'll have too much if I do. That's sabotage, right? Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> okay, I just realized that, you know, in the last day or two. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Well, I can't start a business yet. We, we would have too much. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy saying it no, out loud. It's a good problem to have when you have too much. It's totally a good problem to have, right? I want to sock it away and save it because you know something, yeah. you know. You can save it, you can spend it, you can give it away, you can do whatever you want with this, right? It's totally fine. And here's the thing about fast EFT and EFT and tapping on all of these gorgeous things. And that's what I've been thinking about this last week. And that's where I'm going with this mentorship thinking. Here's the problem. People will go and they will learn something very useful, very helpful. Technically, they'll learn something that can help a lot of people and save a lot of people. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what they'll do with this, they'll use it a little bit, they'll help themselves a little bit, and then, get this, they will hurt it. They will store it away, they'll put it under the table, and they were like, okay, it's still there. All right. And that's what pisses me off. It does, makes me feel so renty that you know something that can change people's life. It's not even about you. God giving you a gift. God giving you a tool that it can freaking change people's life and you're not doing anything about it. This is ridiculous. And so what I wanted to do with those women they'll join, so I'll, I'll work with five to 10 women. And I said, go and change lives of 10 people. Find 10 people to tap on. Share the thing that you're so passionate about and change 10 people's life. Now, this is like, if people can do that in the lifetime, they can die and say, you know what? I did some good things on, on the If you can do it for one person, if you can do it for one person, you've done your calling, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's totally not personal. It's not even about you. It's about your life calling. It's about your heart and soul passion. It's about helping others, right? which brings so much joy and so much inspiration and so much pleasure that no amount of money can ever buy. We can be taking this class with uh, Ernie on financial freedom. And there is a story of a guy who, he just had a lot of money, right? And so his family does a lot of charity work and they also went on a cruise. So they went on a cruise, they spent something like $50,000 on a cruise, okay? A crazy, crazy amount of money. They had a good time. They really enjoyed it. Then they took $70,000 and they bought 
bought bikes for the neighborhoods and they went around Christmas or Thanksgiving time and they were giving them away. And then somebody asked them, where did you have more fun? Want to guess what they said? Giving away bikes. They said, we had so much joy and so much pleasure and so much of a, and they say, don't get me wrong, the cruise was good. <laughs> you know? do, the, do both. They said, do both, right? But this feeling of, and I call it the feeling of being of service, okay? It's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of being of service. This is my five top core desired feelings. And if I don't feel that feeling, if I don't serve that way, I'm not happy. I, I'm pretty miserable. I'm very flat. I'm not me, right? And so start figuring out for yourself. What is it that you want to do? It doesn't have to be super clear, right? But get excited about you know, something that you want to share so you're not hurting this stuff, so you're not holding on to this, right? So you don't become an, a, a, what you call it, a spiritual herder. <laughs> and those things that you've learned, you can actually pass along to others, okay? Does that make sense a little bit? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, preach it. <laughs> I, I got really ranty about that. So you, you can tell, like, I'm in my zone. <laughs> and so go back to this, I don't deserve. And tell me a little bit more about what is it that you don't deserve? Well, the thing that I wrote in my pages was too much good. You can't possibly have all good all the time. So therefore, if it's really good, then I need to mess that up. And I'm so glad that you're talking about this because this is something that there's this book, it's called Millionaire Habits. And he talks about this either or mentality or power team mentality. And it has to do with something that goes like this. Okay, I can either be healthy or have a good business. I can either have a good relationship or have a successful career. I can either be skinny or feel relaxed and happy, right? So he said, notice every time you do an either or and just drop it and replace it with both. <laughs> you know, like whatever yeah. those things that you want, start wanting something, get specific, yeah? And then say both. I want to have a happy relationship with my husband and finish the sentence. Oh, um, I thought you were going to finish the sentence. <laughs> no, I caught you there. I got yeah. you. Um, I want to have a happy relationship with my husband and a successful business. And when you talk about successful business, what does it mean for you? I haven't really fleshed that out very much. Um, talk to me about it. Don't overthink it. Right? Okay. Um, well, I mean, being able to see change in people because of my interaction with them. Change for the positive. And when you think about it, seeing change in people, does it still feel like too much good? Like I don't deserve that? I don't deserve to see those No, two? that's good, but I'm afraid I will take that and then sabotage in some other area. So you're worrying about things that you haven't even started to think about in case if you start thinking about, <laughs> then you don't sabotage it, yeah? <laughs> This is really good. I guess. <laughs> that's what we use our mind for. We get very, very specific about things that we don't want or things that could go wrong, right? You must spend a lot of time and energy focusing on that. And then we wonder why they're manifesting or why things that we want are not happening, even though we do an affirmations and tap. I have a friend. She never taps. She like she tapped with me a couple of times because she needed some help or something. But generally she doesn't. She's one of the happiest people I know one of the most successful and creative people I know. And I asked her once, I was like, Kate, what's your secret? And she was like, well, what I do is when I sit in a dentist chair, I was like, that's interesting. So when I sit in a dentist chair, what I think about is things that I want. I was like, huh? And she goes like, yeah. And I plan things like a year or two years or even throw a four year in advance and my eyes like going like that big, right? And then she goes like, and I do that a lot. When I'm in traffic, I think about things that I want. 
And then she said, you know what? I think I think about things that I want most of the time. I was like, how do you do it? I mean, do you even know that most people don't do that? Most people think about what they don't want, consciously or subconsciously. And she was like, oh, really? <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> and so this is what we do, right? Our mm -hmm. mind is like a Velcro for negativity and like a Teflon for positivity. Yeah? Slide. Yeah. Well, like all the positive stuff like is down. And we start worrying about that something bad will happen or it's not possible or whatever those things are. And so go back to uh, this feeling that it's too much or I don't deserve it. Well, even that thought you just said, allow myself to think about what I want. It's like, oh, that makes me feel kind of guilty. Selfish. <laughs> and I think the biggest mind shift that at least helped me overcome that is that that things that I want is really is not for my best and highest good, but it's for everybody's best and highest good, right? And it works both ways. Way number one, you actually going to go and help others with tapping, right? So that's way number two, uh, way number one. Way number two is you will go and make some money for yourself or something good for yourself and other people will see it and say, huh, this thing is possible. I'm seeing it now. If she can have it, I can too. It's kind of given an energetic permission to people to live a happier life, right? Remember one time you came to the call and we were tapping on like toxic people or something or uh, poisonous planets. Remember that, Nancy? Kind of go where you're going with it. <laughs> that was chapter two. And you said something like, hmm, I don't really have a lot of negative people in my life. Right. People on the call was like, woo. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> and and that's that could be like a next level for others. And people need to hear that. They need to hear that it is possible to have that. And they need to see a real life example, a person who is in flash and black, not somebody who wrote a textbook or somebody who has like tons of videos on the YouTube or who is a celebrity, a real life person who has that thing that they want, right? Like one yeah. of the exercises that I give to people that I work with is go and find happy, successful couples um, and start writing the list of them and tell yourself, okay, they have a time next. So you don't even have to participate in this process. They can like, oh yeah, I know Nancy. Nancy has a happy marriage. I'm going to put her on the list. You just served somebody without ever noticing. Mm -hmm. All that you've done is you did something good for yourself. And this way you added a little bit more to energetic happiness of the planet. Yeah. Oh, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you, pinpointed it really well in a chapter because you were talking about infinite abundance right or, or getting something from the universe the source that's never ending it's not like when you have one kid you like the, or you love that kid a hundred percent but when you have two kids you love them 50 and 50 no you have two kids and you still love them a hundred percent right mm -hmm. it's infinite you take infinity you divide it in half it's still infinite right Okay, yeah. so notice the guilty feeling, and we might just talk it out. <laughs> we'll see how much of that's still left, huh? right? So last time I asked you, think about something that you want, yeah? And you said, well, I don't deserve it. Even thinking about it, making me feel guilty. Go check that feeling, see if it's still there. I feel like there's an, I want it, but I can feel a stuck thing right here in my throat. So it's like, I'm afraid to ask for it, or I would think that would be a communication issue. And give me three emotions around it. Well, guilt was the obvious one. Um, undeserving. Um, The only other thing that comes up is like that I'll be a disappointment to someone. That's interesting. 
You mean other people don't feel that way? <laughs> I'm just trying to connect the I don't deserve it with I'll be disappointed with someone. Can you oh, they'll be disappointed with me. I will be a disappointment. Okay. You know, that if I go to serve them and I fail, then I will have disappointed uh, them. Okay, got it, got it, got it. That would be that worst case scenario that we talked about. You know, your brain naturally goes out there and yeah. And that's also a good topic. And we'll talk about it more maybe in the next session, but I'll just mention something briefly because it kind of goes back to that codependency thing that we talked about, right? So if they're so dependent on you, then they give the power away to the point when you're responsible for their changes. That's not a healthy client, you know, practitioner relationship. It's a codependent relationship. And oh my gosh, it's a common problem, right? Especially for women who get out of the bad relationships, the practitioner becomes like a god. It's a really difficult thing to break, but it's good to be aware of it because that's not where we want to take our clients. When you show up and you serve with your gifts, you are a guide. You're somebody who provides insights, somebody who provides um, you know, an opportunity to, to be in a safe space to process feelings, right? You're like a container and you are support, right? Support, inspiration, and encouragement. That's what you are. What you are not is you don't guarantee the results. You don't change the problems. You don't change the feelings. And it's a hard lesson to learn because we just don't want to help them, right? <laughs> and Robert talks about, he, talk, he called it a savior syndrome. Remember he said that? A savior syndrome. And so, yeah, let, let's tap on that. I don't want to be disappointed for someone. I think I'm going to have to listen to, to this call replay about five times. It is just, it's just so it's great it's <laughs> for me. Benefits of the, you know, Facebook deprivation, you know, people. <laughs> I need to do it more often. <laughs> All right, very good. And so what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and just kind of notice if you can still feel that feeling there, the I don't deserve it, the guilty, whatever else is coming up. So is that something in your throat? And zero, not at all. Ten, very strong. Where are you? Probably about an eight. Very good. All right. And... Anybody else in your body except the throat? Yeah, my stomach. I feel it in my stomach. That's a fear, right? It would have to be fear. I would say nerves, which is fear. Yeah. Nervousness. Oh, mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. Breathe in. Say a word. Peace. Peace. Take a hand, take two fingers and tap between your eyes and say, I release and let go. Release and let go. Of that guilt feeling. Of that guilt feeling. Guilt of having too much. Guilt of having too much. That nerves in my stomach. That nerves in my stomach. The long standing thought. The long standing thought. My hobby's a really good provider. My hobby's a really good provider. Why would I want to have more? Why would I want to have more? Well, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about using my gifts and talents it's about using my gifts and talents serve others to serve others i serve i deserve i serve i deserve i release and let it go i release and let it go guilt, guilt. i don't deserve it feeling that i don't deserve it feeling that feeling in my throat that feeling in my throat safe to let it go safe to let it go I'll be a disappointment for someone. That I'll be a disappointment for someone. Not in charge of other people's feelings. I'm not in charge of other people's feelings. I'll be happy to support them in the process. I'm happy to support them in the process. With insights. With offer insights. Change. So they can change. But ultimately. But ultimately. Your feeling. Sorry. Their feelings. Their feelings. Their responsibility. Are their responsibility. I release and let it go. And I release and let it go. My stomach. That feeling in 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 my stomach. Safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. 
Very good. So finish tapping. Go and grab your wrist. And oh, very good. Yeah, I really like doing the shoulders. <laughs> clearing out all the dead energies, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. All right. So close your eyes. And I step into happy, peaceful memory. What comes to mind? <laughs> My wedding. <laughs> Were you wearing a white dress? No, I actually wore a uh, copper colored dress. Very good, very good. And so notice the feelings in that memory. And step into there, see what you saw, feel what you felt. Um, and then you can really, really feel it, nod your head. Fantastic. Take a deep breath, breathe in and breathe out. And say we're peace. Peace. Wonderful. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and check that feeling. So go back to the I don't deserve it and see if it's still there. It's really small. Okay. So zero, not at all. Ten, very strong. Where are you? Three. Wonderful. How do you know it's a three? That was the first number that popped in my head. <laughs> I don't know. And any feelings around it? Any pictures? Any sounds? Um, I still feel a little bit like in my throat, just a little bit in my stomach. Um, and, and I just see the word des deserve in front of me. All right, very good. So tab between your eyes, the remaining feeling. The remaining feeling. That feeling in my throat. That feeling in my throat. That feeling in my stomach. That feeling in my stomach. I have to let it go. I have to let it go. I release and let it go. I release and let it go. I serve, I deserve. I serve, I deserve. The only thing I need to do. The only thing I need to do. Is service. Is be of service. Be of service. And even that sometimes is not the case. And even that sometimes is not the case. Because I can just be a role model. Because I can just be a role model. That doesn't require any direct service. And that doesn't require any direct service. It's safe for me to do that. It's safe for me to do that. It's safe for me to allow. It's safe for me to allow. All good things in my life. Good things in my life. I can have both. I can have both. It's actually a great place to build business from. It's a great place to build a business from. Because I don't feel like I have to get the clients right now. Because I don't, I'm not desperate for clients. I don't have to get them right now. I'm going to help more people. <laughs> I can help more people. It's all I really want. It's all I really want. It's safe for me to do that. It's safe for me to do that. And so it is. And so it is. Grab your waist and deep breath. Do that. There were peace. Peace. Very good. So one more time, close your eyes and go ahead and step into uh, another happy, peaceful memory. And what comes to mind? Well, uh, the first thought that came to mind is sitting on a boat on a lake. Mm -hmm. I don't remember actually experiencing it, but just it's just so vivid. Oh, that's actually very good. Okay, all right, I like it. Give me three emotions around that. Peaceful, serene. Still. Wonderful. So notice those feelings and feel them in your body. Where do you feel it? Uh, it starts in my heart and then I kind of feel it just sort of melting all over other things. Uh -huh. Wonderful, wonderful. So notice that. And take a deep breath, breathe in, and breathe out. 
Say word peace. Oh, very good. <laughs> All right, one last time. I don't deserve it. Do you know it all? Ten very strong. You're right. Mm, it's just a little bit of residual right here in my throat. It's safe for me to talk about. It's safe for me to ooh, talk about. Things that I want. Things that I want. Nobody will punish me. Nobody will punish me. Nobody will criticize me. Nobody will criticize me. Nobody. Oh, that's bringing up stuff. I know, right? Woo, safe to me. talk about it. Oh, yeah. Nobody will tell me you can't have that. Yeah, nobody will say you can't have that. Except me. I'm doing this to me right now. I'm doing this to me. Me doing it to me. Me doing it to me. Kind of makes it easier to change. <laughs> it makes it easier to change. Because <laughs> I'm the only person I can change, you know. Because I'm the only person I can change. Bad news. <sighs> Bad news. I'm being a little self-abusive to myself. I'm being a little self-abusive to myself. Good news. Good news. I can change that. I can change that. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. It's safe for me to allow. It's safe for me to allow. More good things in my life. More good things in my life. The more I do so. The more I do so. The more I give others. The more I give others. Energetic permission. And, and permission, I missed that part energetic of it. Energetic permission. Oh, energetic permission. Okay. Do the same. To do the same. One of the best ways. One of the best ways. Is the vibration of the planet. Is the vibration of the planet. Feel good. It will feel good. My emotional state. My emotional state. Will either add. Will either add to. Or pollute. Or pollute. Energy of the planet. The energy of the planet. I choose to feel good. I choose to feel good. I choose to expand. I choose to expand. In happiness. In happiness. You like that. The finished happiness. Deep breath. <sighs> Say so word peace. Peace. Hmm. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to my morning pages now. <laughs> Talking about things you want. Yeah. Hmm. How does that feel? I think um, I think that's something I need to practice this week. Very good. Very good. And that's really is the only way to do it, right? Because you can do it in your head, but it only will take you that far. But once you start saying it out loud, that's, that's a great way to check, right? That would also need to be addressed or tapped on or writing it, right? Because writing it is like saying it out loud to yourself and see what else is there coming up, right? Right. And you are in a place of your life where you are essentially going from good to great, right? So, so you are not broken. You are not destroyed. None of those things. I know you had some health issues in the past and you worked through a lot of that with this EFT and past EFT. And so you actually are in a good place to start helping others because you are being an example of that success, right? So that thing that you're wondering, well, it's too good and other people will get jealous. And no, 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 that's your actual asset, right? So look, I am a living example of what is possible. And, and I mean, be honest, it wasn't always the case, right? Like you've been through some stuff that wasn't fun and you were able to overcome it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, fantastic. All righty, my dear. So let's go ahead and wrap it up for today. That was a very good call. Look at us co-creating some amazing things. <laughs> oh, yeah, we missed you guys. Very the much. of you. So I'm going to wrap up the call and then stay for just a second after I turn off the recording. I have a confession for you, right? All right, guys. So thank you so much for listening. And we are looking forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same channel. Look for an uh, look for an email in your inbox on recovering the sense of abundance and juicy stuff tomorrow. Stay in the room. Better done that perfect.
totally okay if you're not finishing all the exercises. Please don't get stressed out about it. This course meant to be fun, right? If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. <laughs> Please do have fun. Alrighty, thank you so much once again, and see you next time, guys.